Lord once more let's be upstanding on our feet I want to appreciate the leadership and God for the privilege to lead us in our opening prayer this Wednesday day 3 of our prophetic fast of the 10th month and straight away we'll go to our prayer of thanksgiving and we'll be reading from the book of Psalms chapter 103 verse 5 Psalms 103 verse 5 the Bible says, Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, 
so that the youth is renewed like the eagles. We'll be going before the Lord this evening and we'll be thanking him for satisfying our mouth with good things and for causing our strength to be renewed like that of an eagle, especially during this time of the prophetic fast. Let's go before the Lord and pray. Father, we appreciate you. We give you all praise and glory. Thank you, O oh Lord, for satisfying us with the good things, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, for satisfying us with the good thing of health, with the good thing of life, for causing us to be in your presence this morning. We want to thank you. We want to give you all the glory. This prophetic day prayer and fasting from day one, it has been a time of renewal of strength. It has been a time of renewal of strength, a time to enable us to run the race of the remaining three months of the year. We come to appreciate and glorify your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We have given him thanks. Now we qualify to ask. We'll be praying for his presence and welcoming the presence of the Lord. And we'll be reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 27, verse 8. The Bible says, When thou say, Seek my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. We'll be going before the Lord this evening and we'll be praying, Father, honor us with your presence. Grace this meeting with your presence. Let's go before the Lord and pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we ask you, O oh Lord, to honor us with your presence. Cause your presence to dwell richly and mightily with us this evening. That your presence will take preeminence over and above everything else. Your presence makes the difference. Cause your presence to dwell richly with us in this evening service. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. We'll be committing the viewers before the hands of the Lord this evening. And we'll be reading from Luke chapter 10, verse 41 to 42. The Bible says, And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. We'll be going before the Lord this evening and we'll say, Father, cause the viewers, both actual and virtual, to pay attention. Lord, and pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we commit the viewers, we commit both the actual and the virtual viewers, oh Lord, that that which is profitable to their lives this evening will not elude them, that they will pay attention to it, that they will have unwavering focus, they will pay attention to that which is needful this evening, that they will be able to have it and it will not be taken away from them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. We'll be praying for the word that will be coming forth from the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 2. The Bible says, write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that readeth it. We'll be praying, Lord, cause me to write down the word of today on the table of my heart, that as I read it, I will gain momentum to run the race of life. Let's go before the Lord and pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we commit the word that will be coming forth today. Cause me to write it on the tables of my heart that I may be able to gain momentum for life. That I may be able to gain momentum to run the rest of life, oh Lord. That I will write the word that is relevant to my life and to my destiny. I will be able to write it on the table of my heart. That no word, no situation will take it away from me. And I will run the rest of life in the mighty name name of Jesus Christ we have prayed. We'll be praying for the servant of the Lord this evening from the book of Psalms chapter 92 verse 10. The Bible says, but my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Lord, anoint your servant today. Pour upon him a fresh anointing. Cause his mouth to speak the word of the season. Let's go before the Lord and pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we commit your servant before your hands this evening. We ask you, O oh Lord, to anoint him with a fresh oil. Pour upon him fresh anointing, O oh Lord. Grant him unction to faction. The, re the revelation that he requires for this evening, O oh Lord, make it known unto him. Open up his inner man. Open up his inner eyes of understanding. His inner ears to hear your voice, O oh Lord Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Let's go before the Lord and appreciate him because he hears and answers prayers. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and give him glory. You are worthy, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Every time we gather, we are so sure that you are here with us. Even in this service, in this moment, Jesus, you are here. Jesus. To do what only you is able to do. Thank you, Jesus. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. 
I worship you. You are here, mending every life. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Lift up your hands. You are here, mending every life. Mending every life. Say, I worship you. I worship you. That is what I've come to do, Jesus. I worship you. Say, you are here. You are here. Touching every heart. Touching every heart. I worship you, yes, Lord. I worship you. I worship you. Say you are here. Say you are here. You are here, melting every home, melting every home, melting every home. I worship you. I worship you, Master. I worship you. Yes, you are here, Lord. You are here. Touching every touching life. Touching every life. life. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Master. We worship you. We worship you. Yes, you are here. You are here. Yes, touching every soul. Touching every soul. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you. Up your hands to Jesus. I worship you. You are here, changing every situation that is your known to be. I worship you. It's Jesus. I worship you. Tell him. 
him. You are he. Touching every life. Touching every life. That is what you are here to do, Jesus. I worship you. Yes, we worship you, Lord. I worship you. Yes, you are here. You are here. Changing every life. Changing, Changing every, every life. life. We worship you, Lord. I worship you. We worship you, you Master. We worship you, Savior. I worship you. Yes, Lord. I know you are here. I worship you, Savior. I worship you, Daddy. I worship you. Hey, 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 The broken heart, you are the answer through it all. Jesus, you wipe away our tears. You made the broken heart, you are the answer through it all. Hallelujah. Wave your hands to the King of Kings and give him all the glory. Give him all the praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Has he been a way maker? Put your hands together for Jesus and celebrate the Lord. Celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus one more time. Lord, we celebrate you, we glorify your name. Thank you, Ancient of Days. Receive glory, receive all the honor and adoration. 
in Jesus precious name we have worshiped covenant keeping God we say thank you tonight thank you for your faithfulness upon our lives thank you for that which you have done in our lives and thank you for that which you are about to do in this service we return glory and honor to you in Jesus precious name we have prayed straight away we go into the intercession section and I'm privileged to take us through the prayer of evangelism. Prayer of evangelism. Mark chapter 16 and verse number 20. The Bible says, And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. We shall be praying, Lord, cause the saints to, to be sensitive to the agency of the great commission call. Lord, cause the saints to be sensitive to the agency of the great commission call. Let's go before the Lord and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, cause the saints to be sensitive to the agency of the great commission call. Lord, you have called us to go into the world and preach the gospel. Lord, cause every, every saint, oh Lord, to be sensitive to the agency call O Lord. Cause every agent, cause every saint, O Lord, to be sensitive to the agency of the Great Commission call. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, cause the saints to be sensitive, O Lord, to the call of commi Great Commission. Lord, cause every, I, every saint to be sensitive to the agency of the call of the Great Commission. Lord, let every, every, every saint to be sensitive to the urgent call, O Lord, of the Great Commission. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, let every, every saint to be sensitive to the urgent call of the Great Commission. Let every saint to be sensitive, O Lord. Let every saint to be sensitive to the com Great Commission call. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, faithful Father. Thank you, King of glory. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. John chapter 15, verse 16. John 15, 16, the Bible says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye ask of the Father, in my name, he may give it unto you. We shall be praying, Lord, let every believer cheerfully engage in evangelism and soul winning. Let's, let's pray that prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let every believer cheerfully engage in evangelism and soul winning. Let every believer cheerfully engage in soul winning and evangelism let every believer oh lord cheerfully engage in evangelism and soul winning lord let it be oh lord a joy for every believer to engage in evangelism and soul winning lord make it a joy oh lord to every believer that's engaging in soul winning oh lord and evangelism let it be a joy to everyone oh lord to every believer let it be cheerful oh lord Unto them, O Lord, let it be, O Lord, a joy and cheerful, O Lord, as they engage in evangelism and soul winning. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, let every believer, O Lord, cheerfully engage in, in evangelism and soul winning. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, faithful Father. Thank you, King of glory. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Our good God has heard and answered our prayer. Let's appreciate him. Father, we thank you. We appreciate you. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. We are going to continue in our prayer session. And our prayer point here is for church growth. We are going to pray, take a prayer for church growth. Matthew 16, verse 18. Open your Bibles in Matthew 16, 18. The Bible says, And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. 
We are going to pray in this manner. Lord, let your church march on triumphantly without any resistance. I repeat, Lord, let your church march on triumphantly without any resistance. Let us go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we ask you, Lord, let your church to march triumphantly without any resistance from any quarters, any resistance. Father, let them not prevail against your church. Father, let the gates of hell come to naught. Father, let your church march on triumphantly and, be, and prevail. Let there be no resistance against your church. Let your church grow. Let there be multiplication of your people. Let there be supernatural multiplication and church growth of your people in the church. Build your church and cause the gates of hell not to prevail against your church. Lord, your word says you shall build your church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Father, let it be so. Let there be more than enough. Let there be triumphant growth of your church. Let your church grow triumphantly. Let every resistance, remove every resistance from the, from hell that is trying to cause your church not to grow. Father, remove every resistance that is against your church. Father, remove every resistance from the gates from the gates of hell that is trying to resist the growth of your church. Starting with this church, this year church, and the body of Christ around our nation and around the world. Let your church grow. Let your church grow, Father. Let there be supernatural growth of your church, and let your church triumph against every resistance from the gates of hell. Father, let your church grow. Let your church grow numerically. Let your church grow even grow in, in spiritually. Let your church grow, Father, in, in your word. Let every believer grow and be triumphal in your word, Father, King of glory. Thank you, faithful Father. Thank you, I am that I am. For in Jesus' great name we are prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Numbers 11, 31. Numbers 11, 31, we are going to pray. We send out the wind of the Lord for an unusual in, in gathering of souls into the finance. Numbers 11, 31. Numbers 11, 31. The Bible says, And there went forth a wind from the Lord and brought quills from the sea and let them fall by the camp as it were a day's journey on this side and as it were a day's journey on the other side. Round about the camp and as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth. We are going to pray we, uh, we are going to pray in this manner. We send forth out the wind of the Lord for an unusual incathering of souls into the fine yard. Just go ahead and pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we send out the wind of the Lord for an unusual gathering of souls into the fine yard. Father, a wind of your spirit, let it go out there and gather souls into, the fine, into your fine yard. Every soul that is dying out there in darkness, Father, that, has, that the devil has captured, Father, release them. Let your wind find them and release them and bring them and gather them to your sanctuary. Father, gather souls into your fine earth. Bring them from the, <coughs> from the kingdom of darkness unto your kingdom of light. Bring them. There are many souls out there who are dying because of Satan. Father, we pray that your wind of winnings, Father, your wind, your spirit of your wind of spirit, let it go out and win souls and gather souls from every corner of this city, every corner of our nation and around the world and bring the queens of men to your fine earth. Bring them, bring queens of men to your fine earth to come and worship you and to adore you and to praise you and to worship you. For you are the one who made them. You made them, every man and woman around there. Father, gather them. Gather them to your fine earth. Bring them, Father, to your fine earth. Gather multitudes. Gather them, O oh Lord. Bring them, O oh Lord. Father, gather them. Gather them. Father, as many as out, out there, and they have not known you, Father. Let your spirit, Father, Father, convict them and bring them to your fine earth to come and worship you, to come and be part of the kingdom. Father, we thank you. We appreciate you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The Lord will gather his people in his sanctuary to come and worship from every corner of this nation and around the world in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord has said our prayer. Let's go back and give him glory. Father, we thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you, Lord, for hearing. Thank you for answering our prayers. Receive all the praise. Receive all the honor. Receive all the adoration. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. In Jesus' precious name. Our next prayer point, you're going to be praying a prayer for divine preservation. I'm sure, so sure that we all desire divine preservation. The book of uh, Psalm 121, I'm reading verse number 7. Psalm 121, I'm reading verse number 7. 
please turn your Bible there. The Bible says the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. Not some evil, from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. We'll be praying in this manner, Lord, preserve all BCA members as they go about in this last quarter of the year. Lord, preserve all BCA members as they go about in this last quarter of the year. Lift up your voice and let's begin to pray that prayer. Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we ask of you for preservation, so oh God. You say you will preserve us, so oh God, from all evil. And that is why we are praying this hour, oh God, that you preserve our going out, you preserve our coming in, oh God. Lord, I pray for every BCA member, oh God, wherever they are found, oh God. Lord, I pray for your preservation, so oh God. Lord, I pray that you will preserve us, oh God. You will preserve us, oh God. Preserve our families, preserve our children, preserve our spouses, we preserve our extended family members, oh God. Lord, I pray, preserve everything that I have to do with us, oh God. Father, preserve our extended relations, oh God. My Father, preserve the work of our hands, oh God. Lord, I pray, preserve even the blessing that you have put in our hands, oh God. Lord, I ask for your preservation, oh God. As your people go out and come in, oh God, I pray for your preservation. As your people go about in this very last quarter of this year, Lord, I ask of you for your preservation, oh God. Lord, preserve your people. Preserve your people. Lord, preserve your people in the day. Lord, preserve your people in the night. Lord, I pray, preserve your people, oh God. My Father, preserve your people. Stand by your word, oh Lord, and do it in our life. Father, stand by your word and do it for us, oh God. You say you will preserve us from all evil, oh God. In the day, in the night, oh God. On the road, in the air, in our homes, in our offices, in our businesses, wherever we are found, wherever our children are found, even when they are playing in the field, in the kitchen, oh God, everywhere, Lord, we call for your preservation. Lord, we call for your preservation. Preserve us, oh God. Preserve us, oh God. Preserve us, oh God. And let your name be glorified. Thank you, great God. In Jesus' mighty name. Psalm 91, I'm reading verse number 10. Psalm 91, verse number 10. Bible says, There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. We'll be praying in this manner, Lord, we decree that no evil will come near us. Lord, we decree that no evil will come near us. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer, Father. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we decree no evil will come near our, in our, our, where, wherever we are, oh God. Father, I pray no evil will come near us, oh God. Bible say we will only see it, oh God, with our eyes, but it will not come near us, oh God. No evil is for permitted to come near us, oh God. Lord, we are that CNN, oh God. Come not near. By the blood of Jesus, we decree no evil come around our habitation. Lord, I pray no evil come around our habitation. Wherever we are found, to go. Wherever our loved ones are found, Lord, we decree no evil will be found there. Lord, we decree no evil will be found there. We forbid evil. We forbid evil. We forbid evil. In the name of Jesus, we forbid evil. Evil, you are not permitted in our camp. Evil, you are not permitted in our camp. Anything called evil, whether you are sickness, whatever you are, so long as you are evil, so long as you are not good, you are not permitted in our camp. And therefore, we decree no evil will come near us. We are protected. We are preserved. We are protected. We are preserved. No evil is permitted in our camp. Father, we thank you. Father, we honor you. You are a faithful God. You answer prayer. Come on, lift up your voice. Begin to appreciate him because he has heard our prayer. Jehovah, we appreciate you. Jehovah, we honor you. Hallelujah. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Maybe we sit for a while as we will soon rise up to pray. Amen. Strength is our portion in the name of Jesus. We'll be praying right now for divine strength. As we read from the book of 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse 8. 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 8. And he arose and did eat and drink. And went in the strength of that, of that meat, 40 days and 40 nights, unto Horeb, the mount of God. You are going from here full of strength in the name of Jesus. Let's rise to our feet as we declare, Lord, 
let your word impart us with strength to finish the year strong. Lift your voice and pray in the name of Jesus, Lord. Impact us with your word. 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 Let your word impact us with divine strength that will cause us to finish 2020 in a strong manner. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let your word impact us with strength to finish the year 2020 in a strong way, in a better way, in a glorious way, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, impact us with strength. Impact us with strength via your word, O Lord. Impact us with strength via your, via your word to finish strong, to finish better. Lord, impact us even as we receive your word again tonight. Impact us with your strength that will cause us to finish well in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. The Bible says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So there is possibility of getting weary. But that will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. Lord, replace every weariness in us with divine strength. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. As you pray for yourself, you pray for your brothers, we pray for our sisters, those who are here, those who are not here, every member of our family, Lord, we replace every weariness with divine strength. In the name of Jesus, we replace every weariness with divine strength upon our, upon our children, upon our fellow brothers and sisters, upon every members of our family, upon every member of BCI, oh Lord, we cast out the spirit of weariness, we cast out the spirit of heaviness, we receive strength now, we receive divine strength by the power of your word. In the name of Jesus, we declare that we shall not be weary. We declare we shall not be weak. Spiritually, physically, we receive divine strength to go stronger and stronger, to walk better and better in all our endeavors in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you glory and we give you praise. Lift your hands to the Lord and bless his name. Thank him for answering our prayers tonight. Go ahead and bless him in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We'll be praying for divine settlement. Praise the Lord. Ezekiel 36 and verse 11. Ezekiel 36 verse 11. He said, And I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit. And I will settle you after your old estate, and will do better unto you than at your beginnings and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Can somebody shout do it Lord? He said I will do better unto you than at your beginning. I want us to lift our voice tonight and say Lord settle us on every side and cause our result in this last quarter to be better. Cause our result in this last quarter to be better. Let's lift our voice as we pray. Lord let our result Cause our result in this last quarter to be better than the first and the second quarter. Oh Lord Jesus, settle us on every side. Settle us on every side, oh God. Cause our result in this last quarter. Do better unto us. Do better unto us. Tell the Lord, Father, do better unto me. Do better unto me. Better than the first quarter better than the second quarter Lord do better unto me that is what the Lord said he will do he said he will settle us he will increase us and we will bring fruit after our all estate he will do better unto you he will do better unto me than at your beginning and ye shall know that I am the Lord Lord settle me tell the Lord tonight to settle you Father, do better for me. That is what you said you will do. Do better for me. 
do better for me do better unto me than the first quarter do better for me than the second quarter settle me in this last quarter of the year better than how it was at the beginning lord do better for me if you believe that cry out to god tell him to do better for you lord do better for me i know you have what it takes to do it better for me nothing have ceased in heaven the transaction in heaven is still on connect your faith right now online and ask the lord do better for me do better for me than the first quarter do better for me than the second quarter lord i know you are able thank you father in jesus mighty name we have prayed first peter chapter 5 and verse 10 first peter chapter 5 and verse 10 but the god of all grace who had called us unto his eternal glory by christ jesus after that ye have suffered a while not forever make you perfect establish strengthen and settle you we'll be saying lord turn every form of hardship we have encountered as a manure for our settlement every form of hardship every suffering a while father turn it to a manure for my divine settlement go ahead and pray lord convert every suffering that was for a while as a manure for my divine settlement lord convert every pain convert every pain to gain hope lord convert every suffering for that was for a while convert it to a manure for my divine settlement for my divine settlement convert every pain convert every sorrow convert every shame that was for a while as a manure for my divine settlement if you have suffered a while i'm sure you will pray this prayer fervently every pain that i've been through every sorrow of the heart lord convert it to my divine settlement if you have suffered a while this is your season of divine settlement lord convert every suffering to a manure for a manure to a manure for our divine settlement thank you great god in jesus mighty name we have prayed let's lift our voice tonight and give god all the glory let's exalt his name he is worthy of our praise hallelujah thank you jesus what can you do jesus creator creator of the universe oh what can you do put your hands together for jesus what can you do jesus hey, name above every other name name above every other name oh what can you change what can you change what can you change jesus What can you change? What can you change? Yes, you are. 
the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, I see you. You look better. I'm seeing you in the future. And you look better than you are now. Amen. Praise the Lord. Put our beautiful hands together for the Lord. And please, you may be seated. I like the way you are full of energy. Those who see God never grow weak. Everyone that sees God have a new strength. This strength that you have shall lead to amazing exploit. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. I bring you greeting from Nairobi. Amen. I've been following you also. 
and uh, it has been a refreshing time. Amen. Walk on this hand, please. It has been a refreshing time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As we get set to partake of the communion, Fasting is not just abstaining from food. There are spiritual exercises that goes along with abstaining from food that make up what we call fasting. One, as you abstain from food, you praise and worship him. You praise and worship him. Number two, as you abstain from food, you search the scripture. You read the scripture. The Pentecost was not fully come until there was a searching of scripture. Why do we search the scripture when we are fasting? To help us align our life with the ways of God. To help us align our life with the ways of God. I love one passage in the Bible that is so beautiful to me. It says, if we say we have no sin, we have lied. And the truth is not in us. Amen. 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 It says, if we say we have no sin, we have lied. And the truth is not in us. And how do you get delivered from sin? Sin means error. Living an erroneous life. How do you get it? He said, wherein will a man cleanse his way? He seen that he take earnest heed to the word of God. The word of God is the water of spirit that washes off from all sins. So when we are searching, when we are waiting on the law, it is recommended, it is not optional, that you are also searching the scripture for the purpose of realign your life. Nobody knows you more than you. That's what they did in the act of apostle. As they were waiting on the Lord in the upper house, they were searching the scripture. And then they stumble into a powerful scripture that says somebody must replace Judas. And when they get that, that, that one done, the Pentecost came. They were realigned their lives. So a time like this is a time for realignment of our person with the Lord and with his word and kingdom. You make spiritual adjustment like what women does when they look at the mirror. They make adjustment. So as you are waiting on the Lord, all of you watching right now online, endeavor to pray, endeavor to praise and worship, and don't limit it there. Make sure you are searching the scripture for the purpose of realignment, for the purpose of spiritual cleansing. For the purpose of revelation, fasting but revelation. Only the one that is seeking is the one the Lord shows. Only the one that is beholding with an open eyes is the one that can see the thing that are behind the letters. In Isaiah, he made it clear. He says, this is not the father that I proclaim. Then he went down. He said, and your light will break forth. So as you are waiting on the Lord, endeavor to read the Bible. That is how you will stumble into one area that your life has been negative. And God will take advantage of that to correct it. That is how light from heaven will come on your heart and disarm you from whatever has been oppressing you. I see God doing that for you. I see God doing that for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So before we go tonight, we search the scripture and realign ourselves in a particular area. And that's why I'm sharing with you with the brief time we have on dedication fundamental for prayer. 
dedication fundamental for prayer or for answer prayer. Let me put that way. Dedication fundamental for answer prayer. When you hear something is fundamental, it means it is foundational for answer prayer. Dedication. Dedication is fundamental for an answer prayer life. For a believer to continuously enjoy answered, ans a, a prayer answered lifestyle, you need to be a dedicated believer. It takes dedication to guarantee fruitfulness. You cannot bear fruit in the kingdom. Not, no kingdom exercise will bear fruit in your life until your dedication is confirmed by the law. Psalm 92. Psalm 92. And I read, I think from verse 1. Psalm 92 and from verse 1. It says, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto the name of the Most High. To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night upon an instrument of ten string upon the pastry and upon the harps with a solemn sound for thou O Lord hast made me glad through thy work I will triumph in the works of thy hand O Lord how great are thy works and thy thought are very deep a brutish man knoweth it not, neither do the fool understand this. When the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, is that they shall be destroyed forever. Amen. But thou, O Lord, art most high forever. For lo, thy enemy, O Lord, for lo, thy enemy shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn shall thou exalt it like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with a fresh oil. And then the next verse says, My eyes shall see my desire on my enemy, and my ears shall hear my desire upon the wicked that rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. Listen to that. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. There is a provision in the kingdom of God to make the righteous to flourish against all odds. He said they shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the court of our God. You see that? Those that be planted, not everyone that come to Zion. The word planted here could mean dedicated. Dedication. Until you have a testimony of dedication. Forget about a life of answered prayer. Dedication is crucial. Be planted. You are not shaking. You see why tree bear fruit in their season is that they are stable. No matter the hardship, the tree won't travel. All of us, we are going to sleep now. The tree in your house, it remain there. When rain comes, the tree is there. When sun comes, the tree is there. When night season comes, the is is never moving around. He said, those who behave like the tree, they are the one that will flourish in the court of our God. That is why you must not be sympathetic with people who are not flourishing. Tell them the truth. Be planted in the court of your God. You know, when you are not planted in the courts of the God, you are planted elsewhere. You are planted in your business. You are planted in your own agenda. But God said, those that be planted, that means there are people that are not planted. Those
those that be planted in the court of our God, there is a guarantee that no spiritual exercise will make them barren. They will bear fruit. I pray for you, therefore, that we will receive grace via this communion to be planted. I thought I will hear your resounding amen. To be planted, to be planted, to be planted. You know, to be planted is also what Galatians is talking about. He said, if we continue in well doing, we shall reap the harvest. If we continue, continuity is another contemporary English for the word dedication, for the word being planted. There are too many shaking Christians. Everything shake them except the kingdom. Everything shake them. I was talking yesterday in Nairobi and I said, it is time, Muslim, we believe on what Solomon said, what God said to Solomon. He said, go to the ant and learn. It is time we Christian we take a, an adventure to learn even from other religion. If God can be referring us to Anne, I don't think there is anything wrong learning from other religion. Because they are not completely demonic. There is a part of them that is the nature of God. Praise God. I said, praise God. Those that be planted, I was telling them in Nairobi yesterday, hardly you find a mosque in a rented apartment, rented building. Go around. That this mosque, they are renting a hall. No, have you heard? Do they, are they not living in the same economy we are living? They are living in the same economy. But you hardly hear that a building is rented for a temple. Very, very rare. You hardly hear that a place is rented and it's a mosque. It's next to impossible. I've not seen in Nigeria. I've not seen in Kenya. Why are churches being rented? Why are churches in rented build property? It's time we take adventure. You know why? Many come to God for what God's own. They did come for him for who he is. So it practically becomes difficult to be dedicated. Because they are in the house of God for a well-defined purpose in their heart. So when the purpose is met, they have no reason to remain. So they cannot be planted. If you delay, they will look elsewhere. That, that, that is what is happening. If what they are looking for, if God take time, they will look elsewhere. We saw it. It has been a syndrome of the kingdom. When Sarah could no longer wait for God, he suggested a guy should give birth. So when there is a delay, they look elsewhere. And when God answered them, they have no energy to continue with God because they've gotten what they are looking for. The Bible said those that be planted, in other words, in season, out of season, they have other reason for being with God except their desire. They have other factor for being close to God. Those that be planted, God guarantee them there is nothing in the kingdom that will not work in their life. I pray that this prophetic fast will begin to produce fruit in your life. He said those that be planted, planted in the courts of our God. They shall flourish no matter the prevailing circumstances. They shall flourish in the court of our God. Look at the next verse. He said they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. They shall be fat and flourishing. I see God give you an understanding. I was laughing yesterday when you were close and I had to prepare my own communion, I have communion. I was watching you and I said, wow, God, you are great. <laughs> because I've been on this journey over 28 years. I don't need crowd to worship God. Amen. I was alone and I was serving myself communion. I was following you online. I was following every prayer. I don't, I said, God, you are great. I've started a church with three people. So you are too many. I've started a church with three people. I've started with seven. 
on this in the school of prayer there are two people require yourself and god come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest he say, call on me. When it comes to prayer, it's between you and God. If you are present, God, will, God does not follow democratic way to answer prayer. There is nothing to let the yea or nay have it. Mm -mm. If you can call on him, he say, he will answer you. So you don't wait for others. You present yourself. He say, wherever one or two are gathered in his name, he's there. Praise God. Please be planted in the court of our God. There are too many shaking Christians. There are too many bread seeker Christians. It's time we address it. It's time we do what? We address it. And to address it, as we partake from this communion, we will receive grace for dedication. Jesus was dedicated to the Father. Not even the cross could separate him with the Father. The Bible says he was a, he endured the death of the cross. The death of the cross. Not a normal death. He was still stable. I pray for every one of you that nothing will shake you anymore. Amen. Can I hear a resounding amen? amen? Nothing will shake your faith anymore. Amen. Dedication, dedication. I like to say to you, most promises of God like answer prayer come with a condition. Most promises of God, like answered prayer, that is you pray, God answer you, comes with condition. It comes with condition. Now, when we meet this condition, the promises is elevated to a covenant. When we fulfill or we meet our part of the bargain of the promises of God, it is elevated to a covenant. You see, when I promise Eric something, Eric cannot mandate me to do it. It is a promise. I'm not buying to you except I do it because of my integrity. The promise of God. It is God who promised. Now, when, when you know the condition that make God to promise, it graduated to a covenant. And at covenant, God must rise up and defend his integrity. Did you catch what I'm talking about? So you must find out what is the condition that made God to make the promise. And then you quickly fulfill the condition. And then you shift God from the realm of the promise to the realm of the covenant. Because covenant bind God. Covenant bind God. God said this month shall be the, the prayer, the fast, this fast, this prophetic fast. He said shall be to the house of Judah. It was him promising. But he said something. He said the fast of the fourth month, the fast of the fifth month, the fast of the seventh month, the fast of the tenth month shall be to the house of Judah, joy, gladness, and a cheerful face. Is that correct? So you rose and fast in April. You rose and fast in May. You rose and fast in July. Then you rose and fast in the tenth month. Then you elevate the promise to a covenant. In order to bind him, Psalm 89, verse 34, he said, my covenant will I not break. Neither will I utter the word that has gone out of my mouth. Sometimes I don't know how God provides for us. I don't know. It's amazing. But I kept on remembering what God said to me. He said, no one planted the vine without eating the fruit. So I keep on building people. I keep on building people. I he say a laborer that laboreth, not a laborer that is tied to. A laborer, not the one that have appointment letter. A laborer that laboreth is worthy of his wages. He say, "Haven't I called you? Go in this demand. You are my messenger. Every good office pay their messenger." So keep on delivering the message. I will keep on guarantee your payment. Praise God. 
when you understand that the promises of God do come with a condition and you rush to fulfill your part of the bargain, you elevated the promises to what? To a covenant. And on the table of the covenant, God is committed. This year, you will end this year. Don't mind Corona. Don't mind Corona. Don't mind Corona. People are building houses. People are buying houses. Corona will not have expression in your life. Nothing of yours shall be negative because of the pandemic in the name of Jesus Christ. So let's read the scripture. First John chapter 15 and verse 7. Sorry, John chapter 15 verse, verse 7. As we look at one, some of the condition, the requirement of a believer to live a life of answer prayer. Give us uh, from verse 5. From verse 5. He said, I am the vine. Listen to that. Ye are the branches. He that abided in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. I want you to look at that scripture. I saw something new today. He said, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. I, I am the vine. You are the branches. He said, he that abided in me and I in him. That is a branch that abided by the vine and the vine with the branches. He said, the same, no matter how it looks, the same shall bring forth much fruit. You know what it means? As long the branch is connected to the vine, it will produce fruit. It will produce fruit. The vine is the one that is connected to the resources, the nutrient in the soil. It is not the branch. But as long the branch is connected to the vine, he draws the necessary strength that he requires to produce fruit. Listen to this. The vine is to produce branches. And the branches is to produce fruit. You understand that? Yes, sir. Now give us the next verse, verse 6. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. And his widow and men gather them and cast them into the fire. They are burned. The moment you detach as a branch, you die. And then when you die, you dried. And men will use you. Men there could mean life situation. We use you as a fire. We use you to become a proverb and buy words. The next verse, verse 6. He said, if ye abide in me, and my word abide in you, you shall ask whatsoever you will, and it shall be done unto you. Do you understand? Now, if you look at this, we can see the, 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 the provision of a believer living an answer prayer life. There are two conditions here for every believer to live what? An answered prayer life. That is when you ask, God deliver. But what are the conditions? Number one, if ye abide in me, that statement really set me thinking. That means it's possible to be alive and not abide. It's a conditional statement. If ye, that means you are likely to abide in something else. You see, the word if is a conditional. It's a conditional statement. If ye abide in me, if ye abide in me, and my, look at the next one, and my word abide in you, then you will have a guaranteed answered prayer lifestyle. Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. So the condition number one, if, if we abide in him, and I think this is where believers are frustrated. The word of God abide in them, but they don't abide in God. Abide means be planted. 
Abide. Don't go anywhere. That's what it means. So it is possible that the word of God can abide with you and you don't abide with God. You don't abide by divine. Somebody says, is it possible? Yes. We can be quoting scripture, but yet we are disconnected from God. That means his word, his word, he said, if you abide in me and my word abide in you. You see, you abide in God. His word abide in you. Now, we have, we have run crazily with the second one. When you hear a believer, he'll be talking, my God will supply all my need according to his riches in Christ Jesus. How will he supply when you are not connected to him? How, no matter how merciful a vine is, how will he supply to a branch that is cut down? It's not possible. He gets water. Oh, you are, some of you have never been to a farm. It's unfortunate, but let me explain to you. If you get to the farm and see where a farmer cut the branches, the second day you see water oozing out from the, not from the side of the branch, but from the side of the, of the vine. Where it is cut. It's, it's looking for the branch. That is what has been going on. That is what has been going on. So when the branch is detached, now the vine has brought the water, the nutrient. You see it, it will flow on the vine. Many people blessing are with God, flowing on his life, flowing in his kingdom. But God has no way of connecting them to them because they have caught themselves. Uh, did you understand what I'm saying? Okay, now that you didn't go to farm, you can practicalize it at home tomorrow in the nearby bush. Just get there and cut a branch of a tree and put it differently and go and check tomorrow. By the time you are returning from the world, this water will have produced all manner of dew, colored, different nutrients that are in the soil. The vine will have brought it. But it's asking, where are the branches? And so, since he can't find it, where does he flow to? He flow back to his body. Many people's blessings are just flowing within the kingdom. There is no connection. Because God, divine, is still abide with God's word, abide with them, but they are not abiding by the word. You are telling God to supply all your need according to his riches. And you don't even seek him. You don't seek his kingdom. He says, seek you first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, he didn't say you look for them. They shall be added. So when he brought them, he doesn't find you as a seeker. He found you as a visitor. He found us as a contractor. You know, when you stop paying contractor, he leaves the site. That's what many Christians do. When they get mobilization, you know what they call mobilization fee? Then they go there. If you don't pay or agree something, they move away. And that's what many Christians do. They refuse to abide in God. They refuse to do what? Abide with God. I don't know. You remember the scripture said, this one has abide with me in my tribulation. In my tribulation. From today, your blessing will find you. Because you will be committed, you'll be dedicated, you'll be planted in the kingdom of God. He said, Those that be planted in the court of our God, in the court of our God. So, condition number one for answer prayer is that we abide. We abide. And then God's words will also abide in us. His word connects connect him to us. Our abiding connect us to him. Then you will stop seeing those blessings flow on his body. Jesus is Lord. I hope you are catching what I'm saying. To abide in God means an unwavering commitment and dedication to God and his kingdom. Unwavering. Come rain, come sun, you stand with God. 
unwavering. That's what it means. To abide with God means connect with God, connect yourself with God and his kingdom. Connect yourself with God and his kingdom. With a sincere heart. Connect with God with a sincere heart. Many of us are connected with our lips, but not with the heart. And God doesn't deal with lips. He deals with heart. That's why sometimes, which many of you will be a witness because it happened to me, I'm a human being like you. Sometimes you see some people are blessed and you can't explain why they are blessed and not you. You feel you understand English more than them and they will win an award in English. God doesn't deal with utterance as much as he deals with the state of the heart. Have you not seen some people very beautiful and they don't have husband? And then you see one person that is fearfully and wonderfully made, even a cripple. And we see one man who loves him with, they are all heart connections. That beautiful one, when he stands by the mirror, he said, there is no one like me. That's what Isaiah said. He said, they say, there is no one like them. They will never lose a husband. He said, he said they are flower. He said, but they forget they are flower. They will wither. Check most people, most that are single, beautiful and not married. In most cases, Satan has no hand in it. It's overestimation of self. Nobody can cater for her. Her beauty is too much. So he remains with her. He becomes a fruit that nobody eats. Won't he rust? He rust. Every man that comes, this one, no, this the leg, the head, the tribe. You know, he, he has he has put himself where he cannot be reached by any man. Where he cannot be reached by any man. So we need a connection with God. When God connects with you, the things in the kingdom will naturally flow to you. The kingdom of God remains the richest. If you are lacking its resources, check your connectivity. And what a good thing our generation will understand. You know sometimes you have bandwidth and your phone is not connecting. Am I right? You even find out, send SMS to find out your bandwidth. The bandwidth is there, but there is no connectivity. Many people are not connected to God. So they dry in every area of life. Their prayer life is dry. Their family life is dry. Their health is dry. Not because they are devil, but they are not connected. They are, there is no connectivity. That's why I say, if you abide in me, and I abide in you, whatsoever, no matter what you are looking for, the kingdom can afford it. But the reason why you are lacking even the simplest of all things that is available in the kingdom is because you are not connected. Not that it's not available. Proverbs 26, you hear what he said there? He said, my son, give me your heart. My son, give me what? He didn't say, give me your body. Give me your heart. My son, give me your heart. Proverbs 23 and verse 26. My son, give me your heart. And do you know what? I know some of you like eating meat. When you go to eat meat next, ask them to give you a heart. It's so small compared to the remaining part of the body. If you see the heart of a cow, it's no more than this. But look at the size of cow. But when that heart stops breathing, the, cow, the big body will die. That's why God said to us, give me your heart. If your heart can be connected to me, I will supply blood to every part of your life. There is enough supply in the kingdom, but there has to be heart connectivity. Heart connectivity. The Lord will give you understanding. I said the Lord will give you understand an understanding. We need to be absolutely heart connection with God. For us to make the level of our prayer, for us to, to move from the level of prayer warrior to prayer champion. Every prayer you ask, 
God answered them, because your heart is connected. Your heart is connected. You are planted. You are not a Roma. There are too many people roaming in the kingdom of God. Today they are there for God. Tomorrow they are not there. Ordinary football match can take them away. And they don't own one club. But go and ask those who own club to come to church. The day they are playing, they won't come. But those who have nothing to do with those things, they are the one who planted their heart there. I used to play football. I play football all level. I play my primary school, secondary school. I play even from my town team. Till I went and joined Leadway in Kaduna. But you see, as I became a pastor, I discovered that there is a conflict. Most football match are played in the evening. And services are also heard in the evening. Mama C met me. So I went and bought a video that can record while I'm away. Until gradually I let it go. I asked myself one day, what do you gain there? They say bodily exercise profited little. That is those who are playing. To you it profited nothing. And some of you won't sleep when your team lose. Chelsea have lost. And then you are not sleeping. <laughs> you are not sleeping. And you are not the owner of the club. You are not a player. Your brother is not there. You have no commission. Rather you are burning your electricity. <laughs> now after the match you go like a chicken. And going home. What? What? So I asked myself what is your concern? So I remain a Arsenal fan for life. I know if you are an Arsenal life and you are still a Christian, you are really strong or that because they can cause you heart attack. The match Arsenal have four zero. Don't jubilate. They can equalize them. <laughs> I tell people Arsenal life have long life. They have the heart of a dog. They never get tired. I've tried to support other club, but no, I will come back. Praise God. And they can break your heart. What am I trying to say? You have to give your heart to God. You know what God demanded from you? He demanded connectivity. He said, thou shalt love the law with the whole, not half. The whole of your heart. He said, this one is the greatest of all the commandments. And he said, upon this and get all the law. The total Bible all the word in the Bible, as it will reflect in your life, will be determined by your heart connectivity. You can preach prosperity and die poor. You can preach holiness and you are the greatest sinner. Because you don't have heart connection. Can you imagine what turning that a vine that you have caught the branches? That's why you see the branches after a while. You say that one you caught, there is no connection. You start growing a new one. That one that you cut is gone. Forget it. Let's grow another one. It is well with you. I say it is well with you. Let me close by showing you an example of people who were deadly heart connected with God. And God answered their prayer. We show it so that you can, be, you can begin to crave to be committed to God. Ordinary your phone get lost. You won't be found in church. When it is time to pray at home, you refuse to pray. They say, what happened? My phone is lost. You don't have, no material connection, heart. Wherever a man's heart is, that is where the treasure is. Make God your treasure by abiding in him. I've seen people move in church like, like wind. Somebody insult you in choir, then you look for another church. Okay, where you are going, one day, one day insult you there. In your office, they have robbed, armed robber have come there and killed people. You still go. But in church, somebody have just stepped on your toe. Unknowingly, you migrate like, a, like, the, like giraffe. Like the buffalo in the Maasai, in, in Mara. You cross. You know, when the weather is hard, they cross to somewhere. And then they return. No, they are to be planted. Say, I will be planted. Say, I will be planted. Say, I will be planted. I was talking to a young man, interview him for job, and he thought he was impressing me. He said, I have been, I have been to seven churches. I said, eh? <laughs> How many churches? He said, I mean, I've served in seven churches. And I marked that word. I knew I was going to be known by it. Because the problem is not with those churches. The problem is with him. Anything that happened to you three times, circumstances no longer the problem. You are the problem. 
actually they are your, they are your victim. <laughs> praise God. I said, praise God. I was looking at a very great man in Nigeria and they said he has lost his fourth marriage. And they were blaming the woman. I said, why, why are people so erroneous? You are blaming number four. No, those four women are victim. He's the common factor. <laughs> because all the other women have one one. He has four. So it's the character that is making the marriage not to work. My father said they don't molest a lady two, two times. You can't molest the same lady two times. You must have had interest. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Please understand, understand, go, I mean, be planted. Condition are not going to be favorable throughout the year. Condition with a tree is not favorable throughout the year. There's a time the rain is too much. There's a time the sun is too much. But he endure. That's where at this season he produced mango. Sometimes when you look at the way wind blow the mango, you pity the mango. But he has to be planted there to be connected to the nutrient. I pray for you today. message will make a difference. Amen. People of God, you know why I could tell you this? I've been doing what I'm doing in the last 28 years. I've never needed encouragement. Not even when I'm challenged. And I've been challenged three times. Even with affliction. There was a time, one fever caught up with me, demonic fever, that will take me from the bed. I will find myself on the floor. They say it's called what, high, high fever. If I lie down on the bed when it starts in the night, I will, just, I will just fall down. I couldn't see. That was 1990, 1996. I can't see. If I take Bible, everything will just blank. My wife asked me, so tomorrow, who is going to preach? I said, I'm the one. He said, with this, <laughs> with this one that you can't see, I said, let the tomorrow come. When we wake up, he put water for me, I bet. He wear my clothes for me. I can't see and I need to walk. We don't have a car. You have too many things and you are still not serving God. He held my hand and carried my briefcase. You would think we are playing love. No, his guy. <laughs> his, there are men who see the whole hand. It's not love. It's they are managing themselves. <laughs> I didn't sit in the house waiting for the only end that I have a car. God didn't call me with cars. He called me to a duty. And then I think as we were going and going, the elder just, Elder Dennis, he just came and turned his car. He said, Papa, how are you? Bless you, how are you? I just asked to come and pick you. I said, okay, let's go. The elder didn't know. Something small happened to you, we tell everybody in church. You are not planted. Where did you see three, number three, go to report three to number two, four? He just tell the other one, we are in the storm. Oh. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> the big tree says, the small tree says, see how he's bending me. He said that, the big tree, we tell him, that was how he bent me before I became big. That when the storm, when, when the storm is over, they retain their position. The small one will bend. The big one will say, don't worry, you come back to position. <laughs> come and say, I hear. Got to the church. Every program was going on. I was seated. Opening prayer. When? I just know when the choir finished singing. I will get there. How I will get there, I don't know. And truly when they finish, I just manage. And I reach there. Don't think the service will be short. It was still full two hours. I was holding the, 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 the pulpit and delivering the word. It has happened severally. I woke up one night and I found in Osogo, I found they have put so what do they call them? Drip on my hands. I said, man, what time is it? Because it was all night. This is one, but past one. I said, what happened to the other night? He said, your friend is there, guest speaker. We have a guest speaker. I said, ah, there's a guest speaker. I said, I said, okay. Don't talk. Don't shout. Just remove this thing. Because my mother was in the other room. And I think my sister, even your mom was around, I guess. There were two of them there. So he removed them. I said, bring my trouser. Put water for me. I don't my, jump into my car. She had a little baby. So I, he couldn't drive me. And it was in the night. If he drive me, then who will bring her back? Jump into the car. Say, I know where the tortoise is. <laughs> and no plenty car on the road. So the journey was easy. 
As soon as I get closer to Zion, Satan said, I wanted to see whether you won't go. I, he, I don't attend service. I've left you. <laughs> Praise God. Is somebody hearing me? Stop being, uh, uh, stop allow every small thing move you. They sack you, you are angry with God. Who gave you the job? He said, in all things, give thanks. Be planted in the house of God. Say, I will be planted. Somebody insult you, you are moving away. You will die because there are more than 6 billion people on earth. And since Satan knows you are intolerant, he will keep on sending them to attack you. To attack you. You join this group, they will attack you. You join another group, they will attack you. You move from this church. He said, thank you, move here. I actually want you to move. Where you are going is waiting for you. Jesus was tempted at all points. The Bible says Satan left him for a while. He came back later. But the man remained focused. May the, to take communion make you focus all the days of your life. Amen. When you look at uh, when you look at Daniel chapter chapter 3 verse 17 to 18 you will know one, you will know the great secret behind the three Hebrew boys is a dedicated life. Give us verse 16. Verse 16. Sorry. Yeah, verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said unto the king, O Nikebnaisa, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. When it comes to our loyalty and commitment to God, we have no respect for you. We will be calling you king. We will call you by your name. Verse 17. If it be so, if you are going to put us in the fire, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, uh, from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O okay. king. Look at the next one. That's what we are talking about. But if not, that means if the conditions still not favor us, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. We are set to, we are planted with God. Come on, say I hear. And what happened? God could not even just answer their prayer. He went into the fire before they arrived. God will go ahead of you from now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, let us stop serving God on contract. You know contract? If it seems please me, I'm happy. If it's not please me, I'm happy. If the choir leader like me, I will serve. If he doesn't like me, I move away. No, in season and out of season. Be planted deadly commitment. No one is committed more than dead body. When you bury him, whatever happened, whether they overthrow the government, whether there is election, <laughs> No matter how TNA or Jubilee he is, the moment you bury him, he remove his hand from everything they are doing on the earth. So we need to be deadly committed to the kingdom of God. Then we are connected, and then it becomes easier for God for us to remind God what His word says. Because when He's bringing the answer, there is a connection. But God is bringing an answer, and you're already angry. Can you imagine? The perfect example of Zachariah. Zachariah has no, has no children, has no child. Elizabeth has no child and they are growing old. Another young, young girl, even the one that gets pregnant by, by Matatu boy, they are having baby. You know sometimes you see what God done out of his mercy for unbeliever and you wonder where is the God that you are serving? A drunk have a car, you that sweep the church, you don't have. But if you wait, the latter end of your life will be better than the drunkard. But for you to remain waiting, you have to be planted. Then Zachariah, on the day of his visitation, he was found on the altar. If it were today, say, whom am I cleaning the altar for? Who am I burning incense for? For those families? Let those children die. After all, I don't have one. But he was planting. Your place of, of connectivity is your spiritual address. When the angel came, he knew where to meet Zachariah. He didn't ask any usher. He didn't go and meet Miss Jones. Who is Zachariah in this church? Mm -mm. He knew Zachariah would be at the altar. And he met him there. And there was a visitation. Her prayer will answer. Your prayer will be answered. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your right hand as I pray for everyone. Heavenly Father, starting from me. Situation of life come to challenge our commitment. But by the communion we are receiving today, 
we enter into another dimension of life whereby no wind of life will blow us from our place of assignment. No condition in season and out of season we remain loyal to this God. Even when he has not provided for us, we will still stick to him because we know him. He is faithful to his word. By this communion, our dedication is renewed. Thank you, faithful father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. As you partake of this communion, God is giving you a new heart. A genuine heart of dedication. A genuine heart of dedication is coming upon us today. We receive it via this communion. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless all this communion. I bless the blood. I bless the flesh. And as we partake of it, that nature of Christ, that make him to, to break every distraction of hell and concentrated on his kingdom assignment, we receive it and renew our own. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. tell you heaven will be sweeter than here please be committed be dedicated I watched one girl in Nigeria the Boko Haram raided their school and collected it was among the one collected the federal government negotiated for their release and uh, they agreed to release them but this girl, they say she deny Jesus. She refused. That's why I believe heaven will be sweeter. And they brought all the rest who have renounced Jesus. And they still give her opportunity. Confess Jesus, we release you to federal government. He said no. And they took her back. You are here in your full strength. Under freedom. And you can't be committed to God. That is in, maybe they've killed her now. Only God knows. 
Just confess. He said, no. Jesus is Lord. And they released the rest and went back with her. People are making up their mind. Leave this board bread and better butter you are looking for every day. Go to another dimension of life. If you watch me in the morning, I was telling you, when you go up, you see the whole Mombasa. As I was landing, I, I was doing the experiment. But the moment you come to the ground, you can't even see more, you can't see the whole of your plot. There is a higher place. That is a, as soon as we landed, I discovered I was not seeing more than the airport. But a few minutes ago, I was seeing sunrise because I could pick some of the building I knew. I saw the Bamburi cement. The whole of the Bamburi cement house. The whole Bamburi, I was seeing it where I was. There is a place in God that makes you to see everything. Please get there. In Jesus' precious name. Praise the Lord. Let's worship the Lord with our substance. Bring out your offering. All of you worship, uh, worshiping with us online, bring out your offering. Let's worship God with our substance. Praise God. The dedicated, we always have a seed. If you want to check your dedication, check how you plan your month in mind that you will give offering to God. After all, God said, let every man give as he has. So if you know you are going to give God 2,000 in a month, why don't you break it and keep it somewhere? Because say you shall not appear before him empty-handed. If that is your level, it is acceptable. Lift up that offering. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, receive our offering. We appreciate you, Lord. We are dedicated. We receive a new reinforcement of our dedication to you. Lord, help us to be dedicated till the end of our life. Thank you, faithful Father. And as we are dedicated, the, uh, the heaven will supply all our needs. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' precious name. I'm sure you are all aware that the prayer and fasting continue tomorrow. Put your hands together for the Lord. It continues tomorrow. We have two more days to, to start having, uh, to have Saturday, which are 3.30. Otherwise, tomorrow and Friday is at 5.45 East African time. Praise God. And on Sunday, we have two power pack services. And I think those services are fit washing service. Please make sure you are here and you are here powerfully. Amen. On Sunday, it will be what? Feet washing service in both services. Praise God. I said praise God. Don't forget to invite someone. We are praying for evangelism. Keep on evangelizing those members that still need your strength. Now that God has strengthened you, strengthen your brethren. And also, don't forget to win new soul. May the Lord bless you and prosper you. Rise up on your feet and let's lift up our hands and give thanks to God. Oh Lord, we thank you for this word that has come. Thank you for reinforcing our dedication. Thank you, Lord, for the prayer we have prayed. Thank you for the answer that has come already. Thank you for your people that are going to far and near places. Thank you, Lord. Renew our strength. Give us multiple encounters on this mountain. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Let's share the goodness. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord God is our son and our shield. He will give us grace and glory. No good thing will we hold from us as we walk uprightly. We are restored to power, to dominion, to honor, and to dignity. Amen. God will surely visit you. Before this program is end, God will give you your lifetime testimony. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Oh, in me I and I too Thank you.